breaking news from the courthouse where federal prosecutors and Trump defense attorneys were meeting this morning. Now, it's the first hearing in the special counsel's case against the former president for allegations of election interference. The judge in the case saying that she will side with Trump on what discovery information must also be, re must be restricted, but also will accept a wider view of what is considered sensitive information that would require the former president's First Amendment rights to potentially be curtailed. That's right. And for more on both of these stories, again, a lot of news today, let's go live to our congressional correspondent, Kilmeny Ducart, who is having a very busy Friday afternoon tracking these developments from Capitol Hill. Kilmeny. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Katrina, Tom, good to be with you. Stunning developments here in Washington, D.C., starting with the appointment of David Weiss as the special counsel in the Hunter Biden probe. A lot of questions here on Capitol Hill as to how that's going to impact House GOP investigations. We've had rapid reaction coming into us, starting with the House Oversight Committee chairman, James Comer, who issued this statement a short time ago, calling the move by the attorney general uh, part of the Justice Department Department's efforts to attempt a Biden family cover-up in light of the House Oversight Committee's mounting evidence of President Joe Biden's role in his family's schemes, selling the brand for millions of dollars to foreign nationals. He says, let's be clear what today's move is really about. The Biden Justice Department is trying to stonewall congressional oversight as we have presented evidence to the American people about the Biden family's corruption. Here's what Garland said motivated his decision to approve Weiss's appointment. On Tuesday of this week, Mr. Weiss advised me that in his judgment, his investigation had reached a stage at which he could, should continue his work as a special counsel, and he asked to be so appointed. Upon considering his request, as well as the extraordinary circumstances relating to this matter, I have concluded that it is in the public interest to appoint him as special counsel. I mean, while President Joe Biden's attorneys are apparently in talks with the special counsel with regard to his classified documents case over the terms of which the president would be interviewed, specifically where and when the president would be interviewed and what the scope of those questions would be, but no agreement has been reached. And earlier this morning, of course, more developments out of the federal court here in Washington, D.C., related to Jack Smith's investigation of former President Trump's alleged efforts to interfere with the lawful transfer of power when it comes to the 2020 presidential election. Judge Tanya Chudkin appearing to strike a compromise with both sides over the parameters of that protective order ultimately dictating what evidence the former president is and is not allowed to talk about. Now, Judge Chutkin said she didn't want this to be a blanket order over information that's not sensitive. She added that the former president has a right to free speech, but it is not absolute, and the existence of a political campaign is not a factor in her decision. Of course, the U.S. Go government argued that this was necessary to prevent witness intimidation. Judge Chutkin said that that's already covered in the conditions of his release and certainly violating that uh, he would be held in contempt of court. But she finalized uh, that hearing by saying that any inflammatory comments by either side that would influence the jury or intimidate the jury um, would certainly uh, be grounds for um, for for some sort of order there for violations. All right. Okay. Yep. Go ahead, Tom. No. Okay. <laughs> Kilmeny, how are the sides viewing this? Is it sort of a split decision, or did the Trump folks feel like they, the Trump legal team, do they feel like that they uh, that they got a bit of a win here? Tom, that's a great question. It was a little bit of a roller coaster because you had Judge Tanya Chudkin, who's known for being very harsh with these January 6th cases, um, particularly with the sentencing, going back and forth between the sides. She felt that the U.S. government's position on what evidence it wanted to include was overly broad. Uh, so you can chalk it up to some wins and losses on both sides. Um, but ultimately, again, when it comes to the fine print, she's going to hammer out this protective order and include stipulations that uh, the, U the former U.S. president can view sensitive materials with his attorneys, but if his attorneys are not president, present, he cannot have electronics there. 
Um, mm -hmm. Anything he writes down as part of his note taking on that, that is also going to be reviewed by his attorneys to make sure that that does not compromise any identities of those witnesses. So there's a lot in the fine print. Yeah, and Kilmeny also, Judge Chuckin said that she uh, would even push to move the trial forward more quickly if anything was posted or shared by the former president that could potentially tamper with the jury pool. So do we have any more insight on that recommended January 2nd trial date uh, that Jack Smith recommended and suggested yeah. yesterday? Thank you for finishing the sentence, Katrina, that I was trying to do at the back half of my <laughs> report there. That was certainly, she said that uh, that uh, that was the condition there, is it would move to a speedy trial if either party was found to be making inflammatory comments. There's been a lot to cover here in Washington, D.C., but we know that the special counsel, Jack Smith, has requested that August 2nd deadline. A uh, lot of pushback from the former president on that, saying that this is right before the Iowa caucuses. He's called this election interference. Um, again, we have to watch and see how this plays out. But we do know that the status hearing is set for August 28th at 10 a.m. That was per the original uh, hearing that we had had under the previous yeah. magistrate judge. Um, so it, we'll have to see again what date they come to on that conclusion. But yeah. the judge, for the large part, Judge Chutkin, has been uh, primarily uh, going with the timeline of the U.S. government. Well, we're certainly in uncharted territory, and Absolutely. there's much more, much, much more to come. Thank you so much for that in-depth report, Kilmeny. Joining us now to discuss all of this is distinguished professor at Toro University, Thane Rosenbaum, and prosecutor Wendy Patrick. I want to go to you, um, Wendy, first, if we could. Uh, talk to us uh, about the, the powers of the special counsel. What makes the naming of a special counsel uh, different? than just a regular federal prosecutor? Well, remember, special counsels have, and I hate to use the word powers, but I guess I will just to sort of distinguish it. They have the, they have expanded powers to do different types of investigation. And not only that, they also have power to investigate any other matters that arise or might arise from the investigation. So it's a much broader scope. So it is true that, you know, the Mr. Weiss was already looking into the Hunter Biden case and knows a lot about it. But the fact that Merrick Garland phrased it the way he did. You know, he probably meant to say it's in the interest of justice, but what he ended up saying is it's in the public interest. Maybe you could argue there's a lot of overlap there, but it, it seems like we were so sure that this plea deal was going to be wrapped up, tied with a bow, and be done with. Now it is not only completely unraveled, but now you've got a special counsel that is going to be able to broaden the scope of the investigation if that's where the facts lead. So it's a significant development. Uh, Thane, of course, uh, former President Trump wasting no time in putting out a statement. Uh, here's what he said. Crooked Joe Biden, Hunter Biden, and the entire Biden crime family have been protected by the Justice Department for decades. If this special counsel is truly independent, he will quickly conclude that Joe Biden, his troubled son Hunter, and their enablers, including the media, which colluded with the 51 intelligence officials who knowingly misled the public about Hunter's laptop, should face the required consequences. Uh, Thane, I want to get your thought on that, but before I do, I just want to add this. We're also hearing reports that uh, Attorney General Garland actually violated or is violating DOJ, DOJ regulations by appointing David Weiss as special counsel because apparently in their regulations, it says that the spe a special counsel cannot be a federal employee, which David Weiss is. Nina, you and I, that mind meld. That is exactly where I was going. Yeah, what makes this guy so special? Uh, in order to be special, Katrina, you have to come from outside the investigation. That's what makes you special. You're not tainted by the earlier investigation. Remember, D David Weiss is the one that approved the sweetheart deal. He is the one that allowed the two tax years for tax evasion 2000, 2015, which is where all the money was really rolling in. Those dates are off the table because they are expired under the statute of limitations. That's the special counsel? That's the way you went outside the influence of the mm -hmm. Department of Justice and you found someone that was independent? Here's something that's interesting for the two of you. Uh, notice the clip you showed of Merrick Garland. He said, David Weiss came to me. Mm -hmm. What do you mean he came to you? What about you? You're the attorney general. 
Why aren't you going, oh my God, my whole Department of Justice looks like a clown show. We look like we're just in the tank for the Biden administration. I've got to do something. I've got to go get myself a special counsel. Here we're being told that the guy that approved the sweetheart deal said, you know what, I'd like to take another look. And you said yes. Remember the whistleblowers? The whistleblowers said right. that David Weiss lied to them. He said that he had full special counsel authority and then later said he didn't. And now we know he didn't because he just right. asked for it. Yeah. So it is sort of strange. What is the mandate mm -hmm. that he has? Is he going to go after foreign uh, the for failure to register as a foreign agent? As Wendy pointed out, he has scope. But will he exercise the scope? Wendy, to you on uh, on the point that Professor Rosenbaum was making, is this kind of it, it is strange. The whole there's nothing normal about yeah. any of this. It is this sort of a CYA move on the mm -hmm. part of of David Weiss, who's gotten a lot of criticism for the way that this whole thing collapsed and the way that this whole thing went down. For him to say, "Give me the special powers and let me go back and try again." I love it, the special powers, and I'm waiting for Thane to tell us how he really feels about all of this. <laughs> <laughs> but in terms of... Give me a chance. Of, yeah, right. You know, in terms of trying to figure out why this was done and why he wanted to take it over the way that he did, you know, you have to believe that he looked behind the scenes to see what the requirements would be to do so. So it is curious that, uh, that as Thane points out, that he's sort of in this mess right now. But what a mess that plea bargain was. And maybe that's one of the reasons that there may be some alternative way of, of structuring a way to settle this case, right. you know, or to, to make it go away. And I don't mean that uh, in nefariously, but to settle the matter without tying it back to the White House, because that's the real mm -hmm. relevance is what does it have to do with Joe Biden, the big guy? Right. And if they can't, if they can't settle that without making it a sideshow that's going to detract from the election, well, then that may be a reason to maybe yeah. look into other areas as a special counsel is allowed to do. And of yeah. course, as, as as Wendy was pointing out and Thamer was pointing out, the special counsel give, would give him the ability to look potentially past this case into connecting matters that could also catch the president sure. in the crosshairs of all of this. But also, it also may, might make him um, unable to speak, say, to the House Oversight Committee mm -hmm. because he's involved in an ongoing investigation. So right. lots to talk about. Unfortunately, we're out of time with Thane and Wendy, but we really appreciate both of your excellent insights as always. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.